Hello everyone. In class I showed you how you could use the answer key on the TI-84 to make a tedious filling in of a limit table like this go a lot faster. And I, unfortunately I showed you that on a day when most of you did not have a TI-84 to be able to follow along. So I'm just making this video to kind of repeat what I showed you yesterday so you can refer to it later for review. So say we were going to fill in a table like this, where we're trying to find the average velocity for an object in motion, where its position function is given, and we want to find average velocities uh, on various intervals, like from 2 to 3, and then shortening 2 to 2.5, shortening again, shortening again, shortening again, and trying to see if that's heading towards some limiting value or instantaneous velocity at t equals 2. So for every one of these, you would need to compute uh, S of 2. So I think we should start out by just talking about how do you do that. Uh, first of all, when you're going to, on the calculator, do a negative, you need to make sure you use this negative key right here. Let me get this calculator turned on. Let's see, there we go. So typing that in, we have negative 4.9 and then times t squared, but I'm going to plug the 2 in because that s of 2 is going to get used over and over again by s. So that would be times s squared, which sorry, times t squared, which is 2 squared, and then plus 30t, so plus 30 times 2, and then plus 20. So right there, I've plugged the 2 into the position function, so that's giving me the value of s of 2, and I'll just make a note of that, it's 60.4. So now to do an average velocity like this, we're going to want to do s of 3 minus s of 2 divided by 3 minus 2. But I don't want to do that type of calculation over and over again, so here's the trick I showed you in class. Um, since the value that's going to change is the second one, 3, and then 2.5, and then 2.1, then 2.01, 2.001, I'm going to take that 3, put it in the calculator, and just press Enter. When you do that, that stores it in the variable ANS, or answer, which is right here above the negative key. So when I go to put in the formula for average velocity from 2 to 3, instead of typing the number 3, I'm going to pull up this blue ANS variable or answer. So for the numerator, I want to plug 3 into this. So I'm going to put negative 4.9. And instead of saying times 3 squared, I'm going to hit the second key and then answer squared. I hit the second blue key because ANS is blue and lifted up. So I've got to hit that blue key to access those blue descriptors above the key. So this is holding the place right now of negative 4.9 times 3 squared. And then plus 30 times t, which I want to be 30 times 3. But I'm going to put answer there, because that's where 3 is stored right now. And then plus 20. So what I've done right there is s of 3. And now I need to subtract s of 2. And we computed s of 2 a moment ago, and that was 60.4. And then I'm going to end parentheses. So this is my numerator. I've got s of 3 entered in, and then minus s of 2. And now I want to divide that by 3 minus 2, which, of course, that's math we could do in our head. But I'm going to put second answer for the 3, and then minus 2. So when I do that, I have now the function for s of 3 minus the value of s of 2 divided by the variable th for 3 minus 2. And so this is an average velocity, and I get this 5.5 computation. And so now what I want to do is start looking at this uh, as the value 3 approaches 2. And so I want to start plugging in smaller and smaller values for the, the second piece that are getting closer and closer to 2. And the way I could do that, the trick I showed you in class, is take the next number you want to plug into the function, in this case 2.5, and just press enter and now that 2.5 is stored in the variable for answer and so if I want to plug that into this function instead of having to type it all in again I can hit second enter and it pulls up the last thing I did and if I want the thing before that I just press second enter again 
and it pulls up the thing before that. I think you can go back about 10 um, items into your history. So if I press enter right now, I'm doing the exact thing I did a minute ago to get average velocity from two to three, except for now the number stored in answer is 2.5. So now the same exact expression I typed in a moment ago for s of three minus s of two over three minus two, now is gonna represent s of three, sorry, s of 2.5 minus s of two divided by 2.5 minus two. So now I'm getting that average velocity uh, over the time interval 2 to 2.5. And then I just keep repeating that process. Now I want to get average velocity from 2 to 2.1. So I can just plug in 2.1 and press enter. That's now stored in the answer variable. I hit second enter once to pull up the last calculation, second enter again to pull up the previous one. And when I press enter now, 2.1 is going to get plugged into all these answer spots. So that'll be doing the computation of average velocity right here over the time interval from 2 to 2.1. So I get that one. And now I want to start seeing is there, you know, does it look like there's something that this is approaching? So I start plugging smaller and smaller values in for that answer spot. So 2.01 for the answer. Second enter a couple times to pull up the average velocity calculation. Press enter to get that computation now with the number 2.01. And then do that finally one more time with the 2.001. So 2.001. Enter, stores that in answer. Second enter twice to pull up the average velocity computation, which will now be plugging in 2.001 uh, for that answer spot and therefore evaluating S of 2.01 and I do or S of 2.001 so I do that and I get this next value and it looks like it is approaching 10 point something here uh, you know they want us to make a conjecture about the value of the instantaneous velocity at 2 and I, I'm still not all that sure what number it's approaching something around 10.4 possibly but it's easy enough to just kind of add to what we're doing here and you know type a few more zeros in there store that in answer do second enter second enter again push that one in now getting all those nines after the three i feel pretty confident that what this is actually approaching is an instant instantaneous velocity of 10.4 but anywhere anyway the the main thing i wanted you to see there is that to make a table like this in your homework not be as tedious if you have the ti83 or ti84 you can store a number and answer enter your formula like i did here using answer for the variable spot and then you can just keep changing what is stored in answer and pulling that back up and um, computing it over and over again to very quickly fill in a chart like this. I hope this is helpful and you know that jogs your memory about what I did in class and now has it in a format where you can kind of rewind and watch it again and see all the keystrokes if you needed to. Alright, good luck with the homework.